What kind of power output are we looking at with that? Uh, that's a 500, over 500, like, horsepower. In yeah. this? Yep. <laughs> Welcome to Build Biology, and today we got a really good friend on the show, our buddy Rywire, with the S2000 build that's pretty much unlike any S2000 I've ever seen. Rywire is, uh, dude, you build a lot of cool shit. Like, Thank you. He's Appreciate been on that. the show a few times before. We've covered, uh, if you look up World's Cleanest S2000, we had your DC2 Integra on, the orange one, insane build. Ryan does super, super clean builds. Obviously, by the name, you could tell, specializes in wiring. Uh, but like the breadth of the stuff that you build is sick. Like you got a, a 997 GT3 RS yeah. and an Integra and a Civic. The yep. Civic's really the coolest one. Yeah, the Civic's probably my favorite. For and that sure. was on an episode with you guys as well. We oh, did really? a little drag race. Yeah. I raced against Downstar's, one of his cars. We did, it was just, you know, you just mess around. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So obviously we've done a lot with Rywire and you even wired Vin's S14. We go back, but today Rywire has brought a different S2000, like a really, really different S2000. Right. Kind of a first for you. So let us know, like, what is this? What'd you bring here? So what I brought was an 07 S2000, but it's electric converted. I really like wanted my first rodeo to into EV to be something that's my own build because it's kind of hard to just like take an order from a client and be like, sure, we'll build you an electric car. And I literally have never done one before, right? Gotcha. So I just wanted to kind of experiment and get my feet wet with something. To be honest, the first time when I was kind of putting this together, I was like, there's no way in hell I'm gonna like this overpowered golf cart. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, right. but I started to get my feet wet and things started to change and I realized that it's more of just, more than just putting a motor in a car. Mm -hmm. There's all this mindset strategy to have it work properly. Mm. And that was where I really kind of started to, to gravitate towards it and, and be a bit more like interested in completing this car. And to me, like it's super, super interesting to see this kind of stuff right now. Cause just like you said, we are going into a lot more electric cars in the future. We feel the same way, like noise, gasoline, car sounds, like I'm a big, big motor and sound guy. Yeah. But you can't deny that stuff like this is like, it's really cool. The stuff you could do with electric motors and all that. Dude, look at this thing. I, like, this isn't a kit that you could just buy, right? It's not, it's not. So me and my friend Cody, Cassell Design, I, I approached him, I said, I kind of want to do this S2000, but I want it to look electric. Mm. And he's like, okay, he's an automotive designer, right? Okay. I wasn't even used to this at all. Right. I had no idea what some of these like future strategies of Ford and Volkswagen, et cetera, would be all about. So he was pitching ideas. And we just kind of started like 3D modeling things and figuring out like how we can make you know, this bumper is a Belayed Sport front bumper that has an integrated CR lip. Oh, and I wanted yeah, yeah, to use yeah. this, but then I also wanted it to look electric. So like, how do you make a sporty CR style lip look electric? So what we actually did was, this is like a Volkswagen themed prototype grill. It's got a little like IDR-ness in it. Exactly, yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, that, yeah. it's that vehicle kind of graft into an S2000. And then we added these little vents. It's one of those things where when you're you know, designing stuff in CAD, you can go, hey, try this, try that, pull this up, pull that up. So what we ended up doing here is we made this, he 3D printed this piece and then we grafted it in. Dude, that's like the merging of electric and rice. Yen ha! Somewhere, somehow, Scotto is hearing all this and like all the Volkswagen nerds are <laughs> like, man, we've been grafting in different grills oh, and yeah. different headlights and everything. But it's cool to see those kind of techniques in like a mega, mega future way. Mm -hmm. 
So the fenders, are those the stock width? These are actually slightly wider. Okay. This is Vicari design. They work a lot with Blade Sport, which Blade Sport's next door to me. So it's like one of oh, they're, right. they're an S2000 shot. Yeah. So Alex actually got me this car in super rough form and he's like, well, here's your starting point. So these are actually wider fenders that they make that come back to factory. So they're slightly wider. And then they, I, and then I said, you know, what wheel specs do we use, right? And he said, this is the wheel specs that we use for the fender. So it was almost like a formula, okay. but then making it look different, right? Yeah. So I actually got with Vicari again, and they were like, we can make custom rims. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what I want it to look like. So go back to Cody. He's like, what do you think of when you think of an electric wheel? I'm like, something pretty low drag coefficient, I guess. Right, 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 yeah. So then we started going that angle and then realized that the stop techs are gonna get covered up. <laughs> And yeah. so I'm like, well, so a guy at Belayed Sports was like, have you ever seen this 996 turbo wheel where a guy literally like lopped a spoke yes, off? Yes, I've seen that And online. I'm like, that sounds freaking terrible, <laughs> but I gotta see it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he showed it to me. I'm like, it's terrible, I hate it. Hate. So it was a joke. I put these, you know, I'm like, let's build these wheels. It would be hilarious. That's and amazing. when we were getting them made, the people doing the wheel were like, oh, it should actually balance okay. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. it's not gonna balance. Like, there's, right. no, there's no way, right? When we got them, took them to the shop next door, Ruin Tire Center, I was literally next door to me. They mounted them, balanced them. And I'm like, what did you guys think? They're like, there's like three weights right here and they're fine because they cavitied out the opposite side and did it really thin. So there's basically like a counter weight. Oh, so like will. mathematically, like right here. Yep. Like right it's, around it's there, like, it's that same cut, but on the back side of the sure, face. Sure, exactly. Oh, dude, so that's So it's that crazy. cut, they just moved it over, cut that section out. That's really smart. And it worked. I'd say the real only downside about these wheels is they're probably a little bit heavier than they could sure, be. Sure, yeah. But I mean, really, the honest truth of it, this car's not a race car, it's a street car. Sure. The forward thinking thought is that when I kind of gotten all the exposure, if you will, done with this car, I'm just gonna kind of street drive it, daily drive it back and forth from the shop to my house and just put some miles on it yeah. and kind of learn where I can improve. Mm. You know what I mean? Dude, where do we even start on the whole electric swap, like the whole goal of this car? Sure. Well, there's batteries under the hood. Okay. And then there's a drive unit in the back, okay. which is the full Tesla drive unit. The rear subframe was highly modified to fit the rear drive mm. unit in. And then we have like some electronics in the trunk. Okay. So I guess we can kind of start with yeah, the hood. Yeah, let's pop the hood pop to start. The hood. <laughs> so what do you think of this? I have no idea what to think of this. This, <laughs> honestly, it kind of looks intimidating. Yeah. Like you got the danger high voltage stickers. You like, have to, right? You have yeah. to have the, the warning stickers. Sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, and the, the carbon plate, there's so much little detail here, but before I get into any of that, just look at this, look at this setup. Like, what, what am is, I looking at? Right? right, so my kind of goal when I was building an electric vehicle was, you, you would think like, oh, there's not gonna be a lot of wiring, maybe a lot of high voltage cable, but mm -hmm. super simple. I actually have full, like two full PDMs in this car, which are those, you know, my solid state fuse boxes, if you will. Okay. So there's a lot of electronics, cause I'm trying to have everything work together and then I'm adding stuff. So let's just start with, look at that master cylinder. Can you even like fathom really what's going on there? It looks I totally different like a, than- is that, is that like a stepper motor on there? Yeah, like what's so, going on? so this is actually, there's like probably four or five cars that are factory production with these Bosch iBoosters. Oh. Because gotcha. there's no engine vacuum for the brakes, there's actually an electronic motor inside of that booster, if you will, with a master cylinder on it. So basically like powers on and then it's a little assist motor. Dude, that's why, the so, stuff you don't even think about when you're building a car like this. And I guess it's why you did it. Yeah. It's like, oh, I don't have a motor anymore. That means no vacuum. So anything that operates on vacuum just doesn't exist for you. Right. And it's rad that something like that does exist. Yeah, it's really cool. And I mean, you could put those in theory in like gasoline engine setups too. Sure, yeah. So this is all just on a 12 volt system right here. Okay. But that's for the brakes. And then we have the batteries under here. But really what this is, is an enclosure for batteries and they're uh, Chevy Volt packs. I have okay. two full Chevy Volt packs. A Volt is a hybrid car. Mm -hmm. So those batteries are basically like an LG chem uh, construction. So like kilowatt hour on these packs are only together, it's only 38. So when you're talking like a Tesla with a P100D of 100 kilowatt hour. Okay. 
So really the, the real estate was the biggest challenge in this car. There was certain things that I wasn't willing to sacrifice. Like I wasn't just gonna like fill my trunk up with batteries. Sure. I wanted to be able to actually have like room in my trunk. It was just a roller coaster ride of how I wanted it to look to how it kind Versus of- Versus compromising, yeah. Lots of compromise. But the, going back to the kilowatt hour real quick, is that, that's more of a, amount of battery charge you have or is that a power output it's thing? pretty much it's it's kind of both it's really just like the longevity of you know how long i can really drive the car if you are racing you're gonna it's gonna deplete very of course quickly. yeah yeah just like, but you know you're talking like when you're just babying it whatever you're getting like 100 120 miles what kind of power output are we looking at with that uh that's a 500 over 500 like horsepower it yeah is. yep <laughs> i see very interesting i want to talk real quick there's a little detail I think we talked about this at Cena yeah. for a minute. What's up with the little cactus? The cactus was the carbon company that I used. It's... Cactus Composites, they okay. do all these composite carbon fiber. I kind of designed it and then I shipped it to him mm -hmm. and then he shipped me back these completely done. And they're, dude, the, the quality is pretty unreal. Dude, it's this. crazy looking. It's like I... a dry carbon on the bottom, okay. it's super stiff. There's no like flex, it doesn't blah, 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 you know, wobble mm. at all. It's and out. also, if you're gonna do anything futuristic looking, gotta hit that shit with the honeycomb. Yeah. Honeycomb carbon? I know, I dude, was like, let's do the honeycomb. That's pretty hot. And even though like the shape kind of goes with yeah. the diamonds, and I'm like, well, they don't have diamond carbon, so I guess I'll do the honeycomb. It, 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 it just kind of flows, right? I'm super, super into that. So all that energy has to go to the back wheel somehow, and I'm super curious to see how you accomplish that, because there's gotta be some kind of crazy shit going on. So let's flip this thing around and take a look. Way. Left right. hand down. Okay. Kill it. All right, so now we're on the back side of the car to find out how all of that stuff under the hood translates to doing whatever it needs to do to turn these at 500 horsepower. So is there anything in the trunk? There is some stuff in the trunk. Can, Can we, we take see a look? That? Yeah, of course. Oh, shit. Oh man, this is like some Nopi Nationals type shit almost. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like on first look, it's like, oh my God, what are you running? I don't see the Dude, subs. Dude, I got the, the plastic cover. Yeah, 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 the Lexan you know, cover. Like the Dude, Lexan. Where, where's your LEDs at? You I know. know, you know what? I thought about doing that, but uh -huh. I was just like, oh, I It's it. just that, <laughs> that's that line. That's that line of being too cornball versus super tech. I mean, dude, that looks nuts. Like the high voltage wiring. Yeah. Like I, I, I barely know what I'm looking at here. So really what it is, it's, it's sort of complicated, but it's sort of not at the same time. Okay. Positive and negative side of the motor needs contactors. I have two battery packs essentially that are, you know, together okay. essentially. So I will have uh, power coming in on two fuses okay. right here. And then I have my negative contactors and my positive contactors. Okay. And there's two of them kind of stacked together because I got two separate packs. And then these over here are for my water heater that heats the batteries oh, when it's cold. It. Because here's the deal, batteries are happy within a certain range. So in the morning when you turn on your car and it's cold outside, you know, or it's really cold outside if you live somewhere where it's freezing, freezing temperatures, yeah. you need a heater to turn on the temperature of the water to get the batteries happy, right? Then uh, maybe a split second later, you actually need those to turn off and mm. then you need to start introducing cooling. So I have all these strategies where my onboard electronics are using temperature control switches and data over CAN to basically turn valves. And like for, for one setting when I'm in heat mode, mm -hmm. you actually are isolating the coolers. So my CSF cooler, heat exchanger, mm -hmm. is like shut, shut down. It's basically closed, right? So almost like an like I'm, I'm ECU thermostat. Yeah, it's like, well, it's basically an ECU controlled thermostat. Right. And it's, and it's taking my, my PDM output and it's basically turning a valve and it's going, isolate the cooler, introduce heater. And then once it gets to a certain temperature, it's gonna go, okay, now turn off that heater, mm -hmm. right? And then when it starts getting too hot, mm -hmm. now it's gonna go, okay, well, the heater's are already off. We're gonna turn this little valve and then we're gonna introduce a cooling loop. That strategy is to, you know, run it through the cooler. And then if you need more cooling, you can turn on fans, mm -hmm. right? But the idea is that the, that the airflow of movement through, through the grill is going to introduce enough cooling through the fins to cool my system. This is blowing my mind right now because it, it, it's still tuning. Like you still have to tune the batteries. And if you've been watching this versus that, the Model S Plaid that we have, 
actually has to condition the battery to get into that optimal zone. So it's heating or it's cooling. It's right. doing exactly that. It's turning that valve and it's checking its temperatures in multiple places. And somebody had to program that in. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing timing and boost and fuel maps, you're really doing all of the strategy to make the battery run in the best temperature it can hot or cold. And we're using an AEM VCU to do that. Is the VCU specifically for EV type stuff? Yeah, okay. their, their VCU is specifically their AEM EV branch of their business. That's it. We're seeing standalone ECUs for EVs right now. Yeah. That's wild. Maybe I'm behind the curve, I don't know, but I think for a lot of people watching, this is that like wild west we're in right now of figuring out it is. how You're to make totally like, right about that. tune all this and make it all work. So all of this craziness, it, it, it's got to power something. So do you have two motors? I have, I have one single large Tesla drive unit. Okay. But the cool thing about Tesla drive unit is that it has a big motor on it, mm -hmm. it has an inverter, and it has a, like a one speed transmission in the middle. Oh, interesting. Okay, so if you were to like build all that system on your own, I mean, you're talking big bucks mm -hmm. and a lot of design time. Oh, I'm sure, But yeah. Tesla already did that for you. So the only real thing that's difficult is to hack into that CAN system to actually get that thing moving. Mm. And AEM is able to do that with their control board. So you basically gotcha, take gotcha. the factory Tesla control unit off of the inverter, you snap it in, you connect it all up, and you uh, basically now have standalone control. So you're off grid. You're not getting any like Tesla updates. Elon There's... ain't looking over your shoulder. No, it's just a, it's just a motor <laughs> with an inverter right. with a, some standalone third party control that Dude, AEM's done. That's so. crazy. So as far as like what my brain would think would be a diff. How does that work? Does it Dude, differentiate? it's got a diff. It's got, got a diff. I got a Quaif LSD in it. What? It's got a diff. You got, I got like drive shaft shop axles that, you know, you know, like when they make the really beefy 5.9s, they use like the uh, Porsche 930 like inners and then you bolt right. to like, and they're super crazy yeah, axle yeah, setup. Yeah. I literally have all that. So there's a lot of familiar things going on, Dude. but, but you're, but, but that's that diff the pumpkin, if you will, like yeah. where it would be, is just directly connected with an inverter and a motor. It like lives in that whole Tesla unit, that drive unit. Drive unit. Oh. And it lives right under here. I mean, I don't know how Ooh. much you could really see, but I kind of made like a skid plate because it does hang like sort of low. Yeah. But that skid plate acts as joining my subframe. So what we had to do is we had to extend the rear subframe of the S2000 like eight inches. And then we had to fit that big drive unit in there. Mm. So we had to like sever the tubes of the cross member. Yeah. So we built big beefy uppers. Okay. And then we used that skid plate with a big piece of aluminum to connect the tube. Give it some structure. Yeah. Underneath. And then and then all there's three mounts on it, and those are all on the top part. So the bottom just ties the two together, acts as a skid plate, and then the motor just fits. So it's, if you got to service it or anything, it's pretty easy to come out. It's very easy to actually come out. It's on normal mounts, you know what you'd normally see on an engine, just urethane mounts, mm. and then that bottom plate will come out, and obviously it's gonna be heavy, so you gotta set it on a table, sure, yeah. loosen all your mounts, and just drop, dr or pull the car up, and it'll be sitting on the table. Mm. Pretty easy to, to do any service. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much how it sits. So speaking of same as factory, I'm looking at this interior and there's some hot parts you got in here. Like I, the S2000 interior on its own is really good, but dude, can you, can, you, can you let us know about this, the tonneau cover? That, that tonneau cover is actually an S2000 factory piece. The CR uses it and it was just really hard to get. I had, I think it's probably about 10 pieces to order everything that you need. Dang. And it took probably like a year and a half, just p pieces coming in like one month, I'll get a part and get another part. And you Dude. could actually order it in black and I wanted it in black. Okay. So I didn't have to do any painting or anything. And right. It was just done and I was able to just kind of bolt it on. Dude, it looks so good. And I, I love that, like the dedication of like, no, I need this piece. I'll wait for it part mm -hmm. by part to get mm -hmm. in there. And then I'm just noticing now, like you have the Sparkos in here, but this is a factory S2000 leather color or close? Yeah, so um, it's funny. They were like, hey, we have these ones where we kind of like 
don't know that we're gonna go the direction on this style. And then I kind of was like, okay with full red, but then this was like black and red. And I'm like, I could dig it because I have the same kind of textures in my car. Right. And they're like, yeah, you could take that one. I'm like, cool. And then I incorporated the red into the stitch. Okay. So this is all wrapped in Alcantara. It's so clean. Right, and then the Sparkle steering wheel is also Alcantara. Yeah, and they, then like, yeah, that was cool. Obviously, so, that's pretty different from a, so from a factory. La last minute, I got that. I got that piece. That little that little controller from a shop overseas just had like a, a little simple okay. selectable knob, and I'm like, oh, dude, when you turn on the key, it illuminates and everything. Um, so it was perfect. But Cody, I was like, yo, last minute, we need to figure out a way to make this like super dope. It has to be a focal point. Yeah. Because yeah, everybody's yeah. going to be looking at the shift. Of course. Like, that's, that's where you're going to look. Oh, it's an electric car. Inside. What did you do there? Yeah, yeah. So he 3D printed this. We kind of designed everything, and it just kind of snaps together just like an OEM piece. Yeah. And it's just a simple gear selector. And then the dash, S2000 dash, one of my favorites. But you, obviously, you're not dealing with rev counters and a different kind of speed sensor and everything. So can we turn it on and see what yeah. you got going on over here? Of course, yeah. So it just kind of wakes up. BC Moto helped me a lot with the programming. I actually was able to, he has, a, he has an AEM dash as well. And he oh, just yeah. uploaded his map for me. We did a couple. <laughs> Dude, so. what, are the, what are all those numbers? Oh, so you got all your different temperatures. I'm guessing that's battery temp. Yeah, there's right? a battery temperature section. There's like my zero to 100 charge. We have power level, essentially, like that Dude. sweeps up for the power in kilowatt. And then like uh, the high voltage. Right now I'm at like, I'm pretty full. It's like just under 400. And then my throttle position, and then we have like a gear indicator and then I can put like um, regen on. It's a one speed transmission essentially. Okay. Direct drive and it spins up to about 18,000 RPMs. Oh, so. So you're kind of limited with top speed okay. in theory because you got one speed. Right, right. It goes all the way up to. What's the top speed? Probably whatever a Tesla top P90 speed is. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Dude, Ryan, thank you for bringing this thing. I geek out on this stuff. I, look, I like things like anti-lag, boost, big fireballs coming out of the As back of the I. car. Right, but there's no denying the engineering that goes behind making this work and making it work well. And we're gonna be seeing more and more of this stuff. So for me, it's really, really cool to just see the beginnings of it. And like, it's one of our buddies doing it. I mean, are you gonna be daily driving this thing? Yeah, definitely the goal is to just drive it back and forth to work and put miles on it and like learn, gather data. Like this is V1, you know what I'm saying? Like I right. haven't done an, these cars before really. For a first rodeo dude, this is super on point. Thank like, you. Props yeah. to you, man. This is the craziest part to me. Ryan rolled in this morning, had no idea he was right behind me. All you hear is like, it sounds like someone's walking. It's... Ooh, okay, oh, it's got a little something. <laughs> 